Here are loads of block facts you likely don't know, and I bet you've missed a lot of this info. Plus, I'm joined by Skip the Tutorial to help you find even more. Starting with number one, what's Minecraft's least detailed block texture? Some are pretty basic, like concrete and terracotta, but they still have a lot of detail. Looking at the bottom of the loom, you'll see that it only has four colours. But that's still not the simplest. The dragon egg texture has only three colours, crowning it as Minecraft's least detailed, and meaning that the reward for beating the game has the texture with the least amount of effort put into it. Number two, even if you play both Java and Bedrock Edition, you might not have noticed this tiny change. Pistons in Bedrock Edition have a more detailed bit in the middle. It's been five years and Mojang still haven't made them the same. Bedrock even lets you do this by changing the progress data value of each piston. Number three, when magma blocks were added in 1.10, they had a feature where they'd store the light level of a block placed next to it. So if you placed glowstone and then removed it like so, the room would be just as bright. It's a useful feature for sure, but it got removed in 1.14 because it was actually a bug. Number four, Mojang have put some blocks in the game you'll likely never be able to use. An example is the end gateway block, which even though it's impossible to get as an item in game, even with creative or commands, it still has this icon in Bedrock Edition for some reason. What's also great about this block is that you can use commands in Java Edition to make it into a custom teleporter. Mm, that could definitely be an evil trap. Number five, a block is a meter in real life, meaning that a concrete block would weigh 2.4 thousand kilograms. So you'd expect an entire one meter cube of concrete to be blast proof. Minecraft, however, doesn't follow human rules. Concrete in Minecraft is only half as blast resistant as cocoa beans. An average cocoa pod has only about 1% the weight of a concrete cube, but Minecraft cocoa beans are almost twice as likely to survive a TNT explosion compared to a giant block of concrete. This game makes no sense sometimes. Number six, another Minecraft quirk is that because the enchanting table is made from obsidian, it's impossible to blow up with TNT. That makes sense, but here's the weird bit. You can just mine the thing in under four seconds with a wooden pickaxe. This isn't even the only block like this. The beacon is made of glass and obsidian and drops when you mine it with your hand. A pickaxe doesn't even help with that one. Steve's just been at the gym a lot lately, I guess. Number seven. The nether isn't very realistic, but the basalt deltas are similar to something that actually forms from lava in real life. You know how lava in the nether flows faster than in the overworld? Well, real basalt is made from a type of lava that's more runny and can cool into stacks of basalt columns, just like the ones that we see in the basalt deltas, proving sometimes Mojang can really pay attention to the details. Number eight. Ancient debris is a really strong block. It's blast resistance is as high as obsidian, but the weird thing is that pistons have no trouble moving ancient debris but can't push obsidian. Another weird piston fact is that they can push anvils in Java Edition, but only while they're falling. Glazed terracotta is the only type of block that can be pushed by a piston but won't stick to sticky pistons. Number nine, you can go really in depth when it comes to Minecraft banners. And if you looked at every possible banner pattern for a second each, it would take nearly double the time that the universe has existed for. The total would end up somewhere at 26 billion years, and the universe has only been around for 14. And also the names for all those 809 quadrillion banner items use accurate terminology that's used by real life flag designers. Number 10. Now I know you probably never use the composter, but hear me out. If you do end up using it to get some quick bone meal, never use dried kelp blocks. Using a hundred of these will give you about seven bone meal. If you crafted these 100 blocks into 900 dried kelp items, you'd end up with nearly 40 bone meal. That tiny bit of effort saves a lot of resources. Number 11. You might already know that blackstone could be used as a substitute for stone when you're making the tools, but you might not have noticed that this also holds true in the anvils. Even though it's impossible to repair a stone pickaxe with stone like you could with diamond pickaxes and diamonds, you can actually use blackstone in the Java edition and it works, giving us an interesting workaround for sure. Number 12. Respawn anchors look really cool while they're active, with the nether portal texture on top. And there's a really cool fact about that. It uses the exact same file as the actual portal, meaning that it's slightly see-through. You don't see this translucency in game because it's a solid block. And solid blocks like that are always opaque. One of my favourite blocks just got even cooler. Number 13. Another respawn anchor fact is to do with the sound it makes. The ambient sound it plays randomly is actually just the nether portal's ambient sound, but played in reverse and slightly slower. The subtitles say portal whooshes, even though it's not a portal and that's not even the same sound file. Number 14. We all know that when you smelt cobblestone in a furnace, it smooths out into stone and removes the cracks. Which makes it kind of confusing when you smelt the stone bricks and then it adds the cracks to them. Better Edition does have unused data values referencing smooth stone bricks, and they could be obtained with commands, but they just look like regular stone bricks. So maybe that's something for a future update. Number 15. There's only one way to find red sandstone naturally. You won't find it under red sand like you do with normal sandstone, and there aren't any red sandstone pyramids, so the only time that this stuff generates naturally is underneath a floating village structure when a village overlaps the Badlands biome. 
And those are some really specific circumstances, so I'll just stick to crafting it out of red sand. Number 16. Mojang make mistakes here and there, and you can't really blame them for that. One of these was when they accidentally made it impossible to find iron ore in Snapshot 21W8A, while they were working on 1.18's cave overhaul. You could technically beat the game using iron from village chests, which would be a nice challenge. Iron ore looked like this in the snapshot, so to be honest, I wouldn't be disappointed if that got removed. For number 17, here's another one of Mojang's mistakes. When developer King B Dogs was adding in the deep slate tiles, he forgot to add the crafting recipe to the snapshot version, making them pointless. But at least he got a funny tweet out of it. Oh yeah, and the reason that the Grimstone name for Deep Slate didn't stick around is because the word Grim was deemed a bit too grim for Minecraft's theme. Number 18, Minecraft has quite a few inconsistencies. You'd expect wooden stuff to be pretty flammable, and yeah, the loom and crafting table can both be used as fuel in a furnace. However, as soon as you try to light them on fire, you'll realize that they don't even burn. That throws a spanner in the works for my plans. Number 19, ever wonder why your custom end portal won't light and this one that looks identical does? Well, end portal frames facing opposite directions look exactly the same, but all of them have to be placed facing inwards for the portal to open. So if any or all of them are facing outwards, it looks the same, but it doesn't work. And it's impossible to tell, especially in Bedrock condition where there's no F3 debug menu to tell you. Number 20. This fact might help you get a few more Wither Skeleton skills in a shorter time. Nether Fortress mobs only spawn on nether brick blocks in nether fortresses, but that isn't just limited to the naturally generated bits. And it turns out they'll spawn on nether brick placed anywhere within the total shape of the nether fortress like this. So making a few extra nether brick platforms should help to increase those spawn rates. Number 21. When Mojang add a unique feature like the chorus plant, how do they come up with a name? According to them, they imagine what someone who's just discovered it would name it. For the chorus plant, it was named after the soft sound it makes when it grows. Jeb also said, The intention wasn't that it actually sounded like a chorus. He just imagined that a forest or chorus plants created a choir together. Thanks, Jeb. Number 22. This might be the weirdest way to find diamonds in Minecraft. There's no need to dig down, no looking through any chests, or any kind of trading. You can find up to two diamond blocks in a woodland mansion's secret rooms. One is in the core of the lava room, the rarest type of room to generate, and the other is in the core of the obsidian room. 18 diamonds is a lot, but I'll stick to mining. Number 23. When you're visiting an ocean monument, you've probably never quite realized the absolute scale of these structures. They're always slightly different, but have over 6,000 prismarine blocks each. When you need to collect loads of sea lanterns, one monument will give you roughly 100 sea lanterns. So they're a lot harder to get than glowstone, unless you've got a farm. Number 24. If you try to jump on these slabs, you can. Because for some reason, the sticky effect of honey blocks still applies through daylight detectors, carpets, and even slabs, making it seem more like a magnet than some honey. And apparently honey blocks even slow you down if you swim while touching the top. But if you're underwater and you touch the sides or the bottom of the block, it'll never slow you down. Number 25. As of 1.18, there are 108 different blocks and items that can be used as input in a furnace, and 165 fuel types. Well, 809 quadrillion if you count all the banners too. But there are only six types of block that can be both input and fuel, and those are the overworld logs, which make charcoal. The nether ones don't do anything. Probably don't need charcoal if you're that far into the game anyway. Number 26. Speaking of the nether, it would be weird if stuff found in the nether were flammable. Imagine the nether forest just burning down instantly. Well, when shroom lights were added, Mojang made it possible for them to catch fire from lava. Luckily, this was fixed, but it's a funny piece of Minecraft history. Number 27. Here's something you probably never realized about the bookshelf. Because the bookshelf is crammed full of books, Mojang actually had to make them catch fire six times more quickly than normal wooden planks. So make sure that fire aspect sword is the only fire you bring next to your enchanting room. Oh, and maybe you didn't notice this either. Number 28. Bedrock and Java have a lot of differences, and sea lanterns have one that is very difficult to notice. The subtle pulsing animation on them is actually slightly smoother in Bedrock Edition. Prismarine crystals are also rarer in Bedrock Edition. They have the same drop rates from mobs and blocks, but they're less likely to spawn in buried treasure chests, making them 30% less common. Number 29. While making a game, there's a lot of trial and error. This was pretty clear while Mojang was adding in the raw iron and raw gold items. When they were added in, they went through four different changes before the final release, and the block of raw Iron saw six different versions, and I'm glad they improved it because that original texture does not have much detail. Number 30. Copper's most unique feature in Minecraft is its oxidization. However, iron in real life is way more reactive than copper, but because the developers wanted each ore to be distinct and have different mechanics, they chose to make iron not rust in Minecraft like it does in real life. And I'm glad my iron walls will stay a pristine white forever. What? Number 31. Another block that we can compare to real life is tough, because in our world it's made from compressed ash
ash that was once part of a volcano's eruption. Rock that contains more than 75% ash is called tuff, and more than 25% is then called tuffaceous. In this house in Germany, it's entirely made of tuff, though it looks a little different to our Minecraft version. Number 32. Walls were added to Minecraft in 2012 so that there could be fences for blocks that don't look quite right as fences. And cobblestone was the only type for six years until Mojang decided to add a load of new ones, including one that's slightly different. See, nether bricks are the only block that also has a wall and a fence variant. And the other ones would probably look a little weird if they had fences too. Number 33. You'll never be able to unsee this chest fact in Bedrock Edition if you haven't already noticed it. Chests, trap chests, and ender chests are all rendered as full blocks in the inventory. Mojang won't be changing this to match Java Edition because of a difference in the way they're coded. Dragon heads and eggs render properly, so why can't chests? Number 34. I love the target block. It's honestly underrated, and there's loads of features you probably didn't know about it. You don't have to shoot it with an arrow. You can use a trident, an egg, a splash potion, a fire charge from a dispenser, or even a llama's spit. There are even more possibilities in Java Edition, like ender pearls, bottles of enchanting, and fireworks. So get using it. Number 35. This is called a jukebox, right? Well, in Minecraft's code, things used to be a little different. For over five years after the jukebox is added, it was known as the record player internally, and to this day, the music discs are called records in the files of the Bedrock Edition. And if that's not confusing enough, these bits of clay are called discs, but it's spelled entirely different to the music discs. Weird. For number 36, here's another jukebox fact. They actually have a special feature exclusive to Bedrock Edition. A redstone signal is emitted without needing a comparator, meaning a hopper next to a jukebox will be disabled while a song's playing. So you could use hoppers to get the disc and put it back in automatically after the song stops playing, looping it. Number 37. There's a few blocks in Minecraft that you probably didn't realize you could shoot arrows through. If you place a dirt path beneath a full block using commands, a correctly aimed arrow can fly through the one pixel gap. You can actually shoot through a honey block too even though there isn't a gap at all. Just shoot through the slightly transparent part and it actually goes through. Number 38. Adding nether quartz to diorite gives you granite, which might not make much sense as diorite is whiter than the two, but there's a proper reason for it. Diorite and granite's real-life counterparts actually contain quartz. Diorite, however, contains much less so, so when we add it into Minecraft, it gives us granite, and both of them are found in underground magma pockets that turned cold. Number 39. Here's a feature confirmed to be a bug that could be useful before it's patched. Sweet berry bushes normally hurt you, but could could actually save your life. Just like water, they absorb full damage for any more. So as long as you've got more than half a heart, you should be fine. This glitch was first reported nearly three years ago, but Mojang haven't fixed it yet. Number 40. You probably know the campfires calm bees in a hive. But if for some reason you want to have a campfire underneath a beehive that doesn't calm them, we can also do that. A carpet over the campfire in Bedrock Edition stops the calming effect. And honestly, that might make for a pretty cool prank. Number 41. Even though real bees make their honeycomb out of six-sided hexagons, or rhombic dodecahedra if you want to get technical, the honeycomb items and blocks in Minecraft use square shapes. Oh, because it's Minecraft. That's, that's clever. Number 42. Snow golems have carved pumpkins on their heads. But in Bedrock Edition, you can just place a regular pumpkin on one and call it a day. The face just magically appears somehow. It's a Christmas miracle. Number 43. Another interesting feature that pumpkins have in Bedrock Edition allows them to connect to stems that didn't even grow them. You can have a melon or a pumpkin with four stems connected. However, melon stems won't connect to pumpkins. That would just be too weird. Number 44. Fuel in a furnace seems to run out pretty quickly, but what's the longest amount of time you can leave a furnace running for without adding in more fuel? Lava buckets smelt 100 items, making them the best fuel in the game, but they can't be stacked. So instead, coal blocks smelt 80 items, and a stack of coal blocks can smell for over 42 Minecraft days straight, which is over 14 real hours. Which is cool, but it can't be great for the environment. Number 45. You probably never noticed this fact about huge mushrooms. Not including the stalk, both the red and brown types have exactly 45 blocks. Always. Grab them with Silk Touch, and these bad boys are a pretty good fuel. But only in Bedrock Edition. You'll get roughly 14 mushrooms if you mine the whole thing, or just turn it into a little house. I live here now. Number 46. The look of the game changed entirely after the 1.14 texture update. But well, something that didn't change is Bedrock. Now, we're not referring to the Bedrock at the bottom of the world, because that that did change, but the bedrock at the bottom of the end crystal stayed the same. Though the pink bit was changed and so was the item, so it's a bit odd that they didn't change the base. Number 47. Mojang sometimes take a while to add a feature after mentioning it, and this is definitely true for trap doors. In the beginning, they were just boring oak trap doors. Three years later, a developer called the Mog Miner said that trap doors for all types of wood were agreed to by Mojang. Then there was silence on this for a whole four years, until Jeb himself confirmed that they were being added, and all six types were in the game not long after. What a happy ending. Ah!
Number 48. I know this is a block facts video, but the crafting table originally wasn't a block. This was Mojang's first ever mock-up of the crafting menu. I can't even tell what's going on in this menu. <laughs> There's just casually 3D girls in the background. Eventually hitting B on your keyboard would bring up the menu, and the only recipe at that point turned apples into arrows. Number 49. The smithing table is also one of the more interesting crafting stations, as they're the only type that can only craft one specific item. Another thing you might not have noticed about them is that none of the items on the side are real items. Only the fletching table actually has real stuff on it. Number 50. You'd expect glazed terracotta to be stronger than normal terracotta, right? I mean, you cook clay to harden it into terracotta, so cooking it again should make it even stronger. Well, glazed terracotta is actually a lot more fragile than the original stuff. Bonus fact is number 51. Picking up frosted ice from Frostwalker is normally impossible, but Silk Touch isn't entirely useless on it. Mining it normally turns it into water, just like ice. If you instead mine it with Silk Touch like so, it turns into nothing. For more blocks you might be using wrong, check out this video here. And big thanks to Skip the Tutorial for helping out.